Hey, and thanks for joining me again for this second round of the Boss Katana discussion. Like I said, I was going to come back and give a little specific description of how to get some old school classic tones out of this amp without using the pedals in the front end, if you watched my first video. It's really easy to actually get some good sounds out of this, just running it clean, because it's got a pretty high quality clean sound and putting some regular overdrive pedals in front of it you can get a really convincing tone really easily but i do understand that that's not the purpose of this amplifier it was to be kind of a standalone all included effects and you know performance unit all in one i, I think it was designed to do some light recording but i don't know if it's up to that task at least not in my studio but I'm going to talk a little bit today about Gilmore's tone on animals, the middle rhythm part, and a little bit about some Jimmy Page tones on physical graffiti. These are classic, classic rock songs. Uh, classic, classic rock tones is what I meant to say. Now, in my other video, like I said, if you've got a Strat, if you've got a Les Paul, if you've got a Telecaster, you can hit most of these tones pretty close. These are not dead on, so, you know, if anybody wants to get on here and hate, I'm, I'm admittingly not getting this perfect, but it's pretty close. So let's jump right into it here with a little bit of animals. If you get into the middle of this tune, pigs is the specific tune I'm talking about, uh, three different kinds. Towards the middle of the tune, there is a really cool strat tone that comes in on the rhythm part. Now, obviously, I can't play the actual song because YouTube will have a mental breakdown and pull the video off for copyright. So I'm going to do a little bit of an approximation. But it's a cool sound. I'm using my Stratocaster. I've got some Lindy Fraglins in my American Strat. But it's basically just a you know, a 60s or late 50s type pickup, but you can get this sound out of most any single coil. And I'm on the neck position. I've got a little bit of chorus on the boss, and you can see right here what my actual settings are for this. Now, I tried to do all of these at a level, a volume level that is manageable. My kid is asleep right now about 30 feet from where I'm sitting. So this is very manageable apartment house late night volume levels still sounds pretty good as usual i'm running straight into a sm57 uh, directly to the interface with no effects outside of what you hear coming from the amp so close to that rhythm sound. That Gilmore is using on that section in the middle of that tune. It's a cool Strat sound and it's pretty emblematic of what you would hear in most 60s and 70s classic rock. It's easy to get, it's a simple setup and it sounds cool. Now, I don't know that I would play a whole lot of lead. With that particular tone. But you flip over to the na that next number four pickup section. And it gets a little thicker yet. That's a really cool tone that's really easy to get, and the boss does a pretty good job. If you're jamming along with the song, if you put it on and, and play along with it at the same time, it sounds pretty damn close. So check that one out. Now the next one we're going to go and try is the actual lead tone from right after this section in the song. So give me a second. Let me swap it up, and we'll talk about that one. 
All right, so now I've got the katana reset for this little lead section, and I've got a humbucker in the bridge of this Stratocaster. So for me, it sounds a little bit cooler to use that, but I think it's a little bit more authentic to have a single coil. So I'm going to actually put it in the middle position and then in the back position to show you the difference of those. So this is what I came up with for the lead section of this tune. <laughs> It's a pretty cool tone. Now, like I said, you go back to that humbucker. And it gives you a little bit more gain, a little bit more drive, but I don't think it's quite as authentic as using a single coil on that section. But you can see the settings that I'm using here. It's pretty close to what we had before a little bit more mid-range a little bit less treble up on the crunch channel which is not my favorite but it's usable so that's why i'm getting for the lead section right after that so try these out for yourself with animals put that record on the list to it. it's a great record um next up i'm going to talk a little bit about some zeppelin on the les paul All right, so maybe I can squeak this one out. So this is what I came up with for this weird tone that Jimmy Page is getting on parts of physical graffiti. His tone has always been a mystery. Nobody really knows what he did, what amps he used, or what guitars even. It's, it's, some of them it's pretty obvious. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. Now, just like most of these other tunes and tones, I should say, um, it's much easier to actually just use a tube screamer in front of this and get the right amount of overdrive and dial in the EQ to suit it. But we're running all through the boss right now. Now you'll notice with these settings that I've got, I've got this overdrive cranked all the way up and I've got a lot of treble on this and a little bit of bass, little bass if any at all. So now I'm playing half a step down. So if you're trying to play along, it's going to be a little different. <laughs> getting pretty close to that pretty close to that Les Paul tone that he's getting using my bridge pickup here on the old Epiphone. try not to play exactly what the tone the tune is i don't want youtube to have a fit but i believe that lick is pretty close it's a really twangy sound it's got a little bit of overdrive on it but not as much as you might think about with what people called hard rock back in the day personally i think he's probably running through something like a princeton reverb on this with some kind of weird pedal in front of it if i had to guess or maybe not maybe he's just got it cranked up and got the eq kind of weird and who knows what kind of mic and techniques that they were using at that time so that's what i got for a little bit of that uh zeppelin on physical graffiti now it's easier to get some classic zeppelin and we'll talk about that in another video but right now we're going to do two more of these so hang around all right, so now I've got my Epiphone ES-175 out, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an old-school, deluxe, classic blues sound. And what we're talking about here is like early B.B. King, late-era T-Bone Walker stuff. 
And the Katana does a pretty good job at getting that deluxe tone, but you'll see by the settings that I've got up here right now, it's, it's a little bit different than everything else. You're really rolling off the bass, thinning the sound out a little bit and coming down on the reverb and, and putting it onto the spring setting, which in all honesty, they didn't really have spring reverb on those, but we're going to pretend like they did because what kind of an animal will play without reverb, you know? That's a pretty cool tone. It's actually really usable. Flip it over to the neck pickup and we can get a little bit more of a jazzy-ish sound. still got that little bit of breakup that we can dial in there like an old deluxe would have so i actually think that's a pretty cool tone and it's easily accessible with this katana in a nice big hollow body now that is a big part of this is having the the hollow body guitar but <laughs> It's a pretty sweet tone. So we're gonna do one more in this video. I'm gonna show you a little bit of classic Stevie Ray Vaughan, get the strap back out and dial that one in. So stay tuned for that. So now we got the strap back out. I'm gonna do one last tone in this video, some classic SRV, and it's pretty close to what we can get with that. Maybe not dead on. <laughs> But it's pretty close. Strat in position four, so the two front pickups. A pretty convincing copy of what you hear maybe a little bit more gain on there from time to time depending on what your taste is so i hope you guys enjoyed that and let me tell you it's kind of hard it's actually a lot harder faking these tunes and not playing the real song and getting close enough so you know what i'm doing but that's some tones that i got out of this boss katana that i thought were pretty dang representative of these classic tones that people may really love so Comment, let me know what you think, let me know what you got out of this thing, and uh, we'll see you guys out there in the real world.